Mother Joseph of the Sacred Heart was a distinctive figure in early United States history in the Pacific Northwest. She was a pioneer, leader, and woman of faith who laid the foundation for significant health, education, and social services in the region. She was described in various ways, compassionate, creative, resourceful, visionary, prayerful, strong-willed, intense, demanding, motherly, affectionate, and even humorous. She was recognized for her talents, both practical and artistic. She was not only a seamstress, but a carpenter, painter, sculptor, and architect. Mother Joseph was perhaps best described as a builder of services. She spent her life caring for the poor, sheltering the homeless, and tending the sick, following in the footsteps of Mother Emily Gamlin, foundress of the Sisters of Providence. Mother Joseph's story begins in the humble home of the Pariseau family in St. Martin Parish, near Montreal. On April 16, 1823, Esther Pariseau was born to Joseph and Francoise Pariseau. She was the third of 12 children. Growing up on a farm in a large family meant Esther learned early how to sew, weave, garden, cook, and care for her younger siblings. She became skilled in carpentry, woodworking, and design, taught to her by her father, a respected coachmaker. At 17, Esther's mother enrolled her in a boarding school at St. Martin de Laval to expand on her home education. At the age of 20, Esther learned from Bishop Ignace Bourget about a new religious community in Montreal known as the Sisters of Providence and led by Mother Emily Gamlin she began to consider religious life. Within a few months, Esther felt a calling from God to be a religious. Her family regarded her calling as a great honor conferred by God on them all. On December 26, 1843, Joseph Pariseau accompanied Esther to the Asile of Providence and presented his daughter to Mother Emily Gamlin, assuring her that Esther was skilled in housework, carpentry, and supervising people, adding that she would someday make a good superior. As a young sister, Esther worked in the pharmacy and infirmary and sewed habits for the sisters and vestments for the priests. She also helped with shopping, baking, and laundry. While making candles and other pieces in the wax workshop, she learned to mold and paint wax figures of the infant Jesus an art she continued until a few years before her death. On July 21, 1845, Esther professed her first vows of poverty, chastity, obedience, and service to the poor. She received her religious name, Sister Joseph, and became the 13th member of the religious community. After two years ministering to elderly women, Sister Joseph was assigned to manage the community's finances. She also cared for the sisters afflicted with typhus and cholera during the epidemics that struck Montreal in the 1840s. During this time, Sister Joseph became close to Mother Emily Gamlin as her assistant for two years and as her devoted caregiver when she became seriously ill in 1850. Sister Joseph was by her side when the beloved foundress of the Sisters of Providence died of cholera in 1851. In a letter, she described herself as one of the privileged companions of Mother Gamlin when she gave her beautiful soul to God. Sister Joseph was named to assist the new superior, Mother Caron, in 1852. Though she had expressed interest in foreign missions, Sister Joseph was not chosen to accompany Mother Bernarda Morin to the Western United States because her skills could not be spared at that time. In an unexpected turn of events, Mother Bernarda and her sister companions settled in Chile, so there remained an opportunity for a group of sisters to set up the first mission in the West. 
in 1856, Sister Joseph was selected to lead four other Sisters of Providence from Montreal to the remote Washington Territory. Bishop Bourget dedicated the mission to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. From then on, Sister Joseph was known as Mother Joseph of the Sacred Heart because the bishop believed the mission would not fail under the Sacred Heart. After an arduous month-long journey by ship and train via Panama, Mother Joseph and her companions landed at Fort Vancouver on the Columbia River in Washington Territory on December 8, 1856. Because preparations for their arrival had been overlooked in Vancouver, a one-room attic in the bishop's home became the first convent for the sisters. Mother Joseph served as the local superior as well as mistress of novices. Mother Joseph and her companions endured many challenges, rough living conditions, treacherous travel, a new language, lack of resources, and a demand for many social services. In 1857, the sisters took possession of their new convent, a simple 16 by 24 foot cabin, which served multiple purposes. Within just a few months of their arrival in Vancouver, the sisters welcomed a two-and-a-half-year-old girl into their home, followed by an infant boy. The orphans had a special place in Mother Joseph's heart. Over the years, she built several homes for those she called abandoned little ones. The pioneering territory was in the throes of social, political, and economic change, and it was in desperate need of both a school and a hospital. In 1858, 29 women of various faiths formed the Ladies of Charity and committed to raising money for a hospital in Vancouver. Mother Joseph founded the first permanent hospital in the Northwest, St. Joseph Hospital, which opened in 1858. The modernized, rebuilt hospital is currently sponsored by Peace Health, making it the oldest continuously operated hospital in the region. The original four-bed hospital in a wooden cottage in Vancouver was the first of 14 healthcare facilities that Mother Joseph would establish during her life. Though it has evolved into Southwest Washington Medical Center, the hospital still pays tribute to Mother Joseph's legacy with a prominent statue. The Sisters of Providence incorporated in 1859 with the Washington Territorial Government. The incorporation document stated that the purpose was the relief of needy and suffering humanity in the care of orphans, invalids, the sick and poor, and education of youth. Today, it is the second oldest surviving nonprofit corporation in the state of Washington. Money for the ministries was always in short supply. To raise funds, the sisters went on begging tours, lengthy, dangerous trips by horseback and riverboat to the mines and lumber camps in Idaho, Montana, Oregon, and British Columbia. Providentially, they always seemed to find the resources needed to provide for the poor and vulnerable members of the region. In the years following, Mother Joseph was asked to bring the ministries of the Sisters of Providence to towns throughout the West. The Sisters opened a school in Stillicum in 1863 and another in Walla Walla in 1864. At the urging of the bishop and priests, in 1864, four sisters traveled east of the Rocky Mountains to establish a school for Native American children in St. Ignatius, Montana. Mother Joseph wrote, In coming here, we all desired to devote ourselves most especially to the education of the Indian children. In 1866, Mother Joseph transitioned from the role of superior to treasurer of the Western missions. She also returned to building and converted an old house into Washington Territory's first hospital for the mentally ill. It was a short-lived but critically needed facility. As the need to accommodate more students grew, Mother Joseph acquired land and materials to build the first permanent school in the Northwest, Providence Academy. 
In 1874, the sisters and 100 orphans moved in, and they began operating a grade school and high school. Providence Academy is the only one of Mother Joseph's buildings still standing. In addition to serving the present-day states of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana, the Sisters Ministries also extended to the present-day province of British Columbia with a school in Kootenai, a hospital in Cranbrook, and a hospital and orphanage in New Westminster. The Providence Orphanage was the last institution that Mother Joseph helped establish. She noted, it is probably the last child I will have the honor of holding over the baptismal font. In 1899, her 55th year of religious life, Mother Joseph's health began to fail. She resolved to continue her work and prayed for the ability to do so. She was treated for breast cancer at St. Vincent Hospital in Portland. When the tumor spread to her brain and her active ministry ended, Mother Joseph retired to her room next to the chapel at Providence Academy. The Chronicles record her last words to the sisters at her bedside. My dear sisters, allow me to recommend to you the care of the poor in our houses as well as those without. Take good care of them. Have no fear of them. Assist them and receive them. Then you will have no regrets. Do not say, ah, this does not concern me. Let others see to them. My sisters, whatever concerns the poor is always our affair. Mother Joseph of the Sacred Heart died January 19, 1902, at the age of 79. She is buried with her sisters at the Mother Joseph Catholic Cemetery of Vancouver. What Mother Joseph accomplished in 46 years is extraordinary. She established 33 ministries in the Pacific Northwest, including schools, orphanages, hospitals, and other ministries of care. In recognition of her significant contributions to the development of Washington State, a statue of Mother Joseph was dedicated in Statuary Hall in Washington, D.C., and a duplicate in the state capitol in Olympia, Washington, in 1980. In 1999, a group of sixth grade students from Vancouver, Washington, promoted a bill to have Mother Joseph's April 16th birthday declared a non-legal holiday in the state of Washington. The bill passed unanimously. Nearly every year since 1976, the Sisters of Providence have recognized an individual whose work with those in need exemplifies the spirit and legacy of Mother Joseph. Today, the Sisters in Mother Joseph Province continue to present the Mother Joseph Award. Mother Joseph is revered not only as the pioneer leader of the Sisters of Providence in the West, but as an inspiration to the health system employees and partners who continue to carry out the mission and ministries of the Sisters of Providence. As Mother Joseph proclaimed of Christ in the last years of her life, he has given me a flame. Today, that flame continues to burn as an example for all.